Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Today we're going to make sable cookies, which is a French butter cookie, and this is what they look like. They have really nice shiny tops, and I like to do a crisscross design on it, and then traditionally they have the fluted edges. So, to make this, we're just making like a basic cookie batter. So if you have an electric stand mixer like I have here, use your paddle attachment. You could use a hand mixer, or really you could uh, just make this in a large bowl with a wooden spoon. So th this is a simple butter cookie. So the flavor of your butter and there's vanilla are really important here. So try to use the best quality that you can afford. So the first thing we need is 10 tablespoons, which is 140 grams of butter. Have your butter at room temperature. You could use, I like, as you know, if you've watched any of the videos, I prefer unsalted butter, but you can use salted if that's what you want. I would just leave out the salt that is in the recipe. So just put that in there. And then I'm just going to beat this for a second just to uh, make it nice and creamy and smooth. And then we're going to add a half a cup, which is 100 grams of granulated white sugar. And then as always, you know, scrape down the sides and the bottom of your bowl as much as you need to to make sure everything's all mixed together. And then I'm also going to add for flavoring one teaspoon, four grams of a pure vanilla extract. Or what would be really nice too is you could use that vanilla bean paste because then it's got those little beans little tiny seeds, which would look nice in these cookies. So now what I'm going to do is beat this on medium sp speed until you want to get a little bit of air in this batter. So maybe for a couple minutes. Okay. So there we have it. So you're just looking for, you know, everything to be mixed together and a little bit of air. And then we're going to enrich our cookie dough with one large egg and have your egg at room temperature. Beats in a lot better. It's room temperature rather than cold from the fridge. Okay, so this is what we're looking for. So now our dry ingredients. I have in a separate bowl two cups, which is 260 grams of an all-purpose flour. You may know that as a plain flour. And to that, I'm going to add just a half a teaspoon, two grams of baking powder. That'll give our cookies just a little bit of lift. And, and then just a quarter of a teaspoon, one gram of salt. Now you can sift these together or I'm just going to use my whisk. You want to make sure, get a little air in the flour plus to make sure that the baking powder and salt is mixed in. Okay, now I'm going to add the flour. And then I'm going to start this on low speed because I don't want it to come up into my face. And then just beat at medium speed just until the dough comes together. That's good. So we're done. Pretty easy batter to make. It's kind of like, kind of like, well, like a sugar cookie, cross between a sugar cookie and a shortbread cookie. It's, it's a nice uh, crisp and crumbly texture. It's a really nice tasting cookie. Okay, so now, make sure we got everything all mixed. And then, here. so we are going to, as you saw, we're going to cut out these cookies. A lot of times in the past, what I would do is just wrap this 
in plastic wrap and then chill it. And then once it's chilled, then I would roll it. But what I found is, as long as your batter is not too soft, if it is really soft, then you probably will have to chill it before you roll it. But what I'm going to do is, because mine's not too bad, I'm going to cut it, you know, I'm just going to eyeball it. And it feels about right, in half. And then, I'm going to roll it out right now, kind of save a little bit of a step. So I'm taking two pieces of parchment paper. You could use wax paper. And then, I'm just going to flatten this, and I'm going to roll it out to about a thickness of a quarter inch, which is about a half a centimeter. So just put that on top and then roll. Now, when you roll, you want to um, periodically, you, want to, you don't want the paper to be creased because then that'll crease your, your uh, batter. So flip it and then you can check. I find for, you know, if you're kind of like how big, <laughs> what is a quarter inch? If I roll this to a, about a nine inch circle, which is um, nine inches, 23 centimeters, that's about the right thickness. And what I do, let's see, just keep flipping to make sure, is I run my hand over it. And that way, because you want a pretty even thickness. You don't want some cookies really thick and some really thin because then they'll bake at different times. So if I run my hand over, I can pretty well tell if that it's the, uh, an even thickness. And always, you know, the center tends to be thicker, so just keep, make sure you uh, roll from the center out. And then, so, you can also peel it back, and you can see, that's about right. And it feels, feels like pretty good thickness. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take this, transfer it onto a baking sheet, and then put it into the refrigerator until it's, you know, really chilled. I find at least an hour. I mean, you could, if you wanted to, put it in the freezer for if you're in a real rush. But um, I find about an hour. And if you wanted to, if you wanted to make this at, to this point, put it in the fridge overnight, that is absolutely fine. I often do that. So I'm going to put this in the fridge, and I'm going to roll out my other one. And when we come back, we will cut out our cookies. So now, uh, my uh, dough has chilled, but what I'm going to do first is we're going to brush the top of the cookies with an egg wash. So in a large or in a medium-sized bowl, I have a, one large egg and have that at room temperature. And then I'm just going to add like just a couple pinches of, of uh, salt and then about one tablespoon of cream. If you don't have any cream in the house, you can use water. And I'm just going to whisk all that together. And that, this glaze is what's going to give um, our cookies that really nice shine. Okay, and then, so take this off of here and peel back paper and then a cookie cutter. I mean, really, they say the traditional design is the fluted. If you don't have a fluted cookie cutter, that is absolutely fine. Just use round. You can do stars, hearts. I mean, really, whatever you want. And I'm using about a uh, two inch, five centimeter. I mean, if you want larger, you can, you can do that. And then just, we're going to cut out our cookies and then put them on a parchment lined baking sheet like so. Okay, so I, I'm getting 12 out of this, and don't throw, throw away these scraps. Just gather them up and re-roll them between your two sheets of parchment paper. Put it back in the fridge, chill it, and then you get some more. So then, what I want to do now is I'm going to brush the tops. A little bit of that egg wash. Kind of a two step process here, I'll show you. Okay. 
and then I like to do the, that crisscross design on top. Now you could just use uh, the back of the tines of a fork, but I like to use my little toothpick. <laughs> and then what I do is just, you know, you can kind of do as many as you want. And then this way. So just do that with all of them. Okay, that's my last one. So while I was working, you know, I had to cut them out and do all this. They have softened. So what I'm going to do is put them back into the fridge to chill while I preheat my oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 180 degrees Celsius. And when we come back, we will bake our cookies. Okay, so our oven's ready to go. So then what I like to do is just give them another quick brush of the egg wash. So we make sure they're nice and shiny on top. And then we're going to bake these. Everyone's oven is different, so baking time can vary. Uh, and also it depends, you know, if you tend, if you made yours a little thicker or bigger than, than uh, mine, they might take a little longer. But I find around 12 minutes. And what you're looking for is around the edges, they're nice and golden brown. So I'd say 12 to 14 minutes. Okay, our butter cookies are done. Don't they look gorgeous? As you can see, nice and golden brown around the edges and they got shiny tops. So I'm just going to let them cool on a wire rack for a little bit. And when we come back, we will try one. Okay, so they're nice and cool. As you can see, they're really pretty with that crisscross and then the shiny glaze on top. You know, a really good flavor. A little, a little sweet, but not overly sweet. You got a little bit of vanilla. And of course, the butter, <laughs> really nice taste of butter. And the, the texture is kind of crisp and crumbly. You know, I love to have this just kind of nibble on this with a cup of coffee, cup of tea. A really nice, simple, but delicious cookie. And you can cover and store these for, I'd say, four or five days. You can freeze them. And what's also nice, it, what you could do is take two cookies and then sandwich them together with uh, chocolate ganache is very good or a lemon curd. You could use a jam or preserve or uh, dulce de leche is very good as well. So try them. And until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com.